Hi folks, this is all the fruit and about 10 to 12 days ago the European mango season started. At least uh, that's when I noticed that it started. And the European mango season for me is one very important time of the year because of the supreme quality of the European mangoes. Well, yeah, firstly, yes, there is a European mango production. Even a non-insignificant commercial mango production, I mean, they're enough to supply Lidl, one of the biggest uh, supermarket chains in Europe, and I'm sure they supply also a lot of other shops and supermarkets. Yeah, the, the big mango growing areas in Europe are in the, on the Costa Tropical and surrounding areas in southern Spain. It's not called Costa Tropical for nothing. They are not just mangoes, but also papayas, chirimoyas, avocados, and other tropical and subtropical fruit. Let's see where exactly those mangoes come from. Velez Malaga. Oh, yeah. This is right smack on the Costa Tropical. There are smaller commercial mango productions in uh, Sicily and Crete. But yeah, the Costa Tropical is the only significant one that also can produce a significant number of mangoes for export. And those mangoes are clearly superior to pretty much every other mango we get here, except for the very expensive ones. Why is that so? Well, Let's be honest, most of us cannot afford those expensive mangoes that come here by plane on a regular base. They cost like 6, 8, 10 euro a piece. They come from all over the world. They are different varieties. Um, yeah, and then they can be very good, but they are also too expensive. Normal mangoes come by ship. They are usually quite cheap, about a euro in every supermarket and usually of bad quality. Sometimes I find some good canned mangoes. Sometimes, if I'm lucky, also some other good mangoes. Usually I just glance over the mangoes on the fruit aisle. Nah, they look like nothing. Sometimes I think, okay, there could be something and they choose two or three of the best ones from a bunch of 50 or 100. But yeah, it's difficult when the mangoes are being shipped for many weeks. They are being picked usually very, very underripe in order to survive this uh, long journey. Well, with the European mangoes, it's different. I mean, they just travel like a day or two by truck or by train from Spain to Germany. Of course, they are also picked underripe, but not as underripe. Well, on the first days of the mango season, I saw a couple good mangoes. I don't know why I did not buy them. Then a couple days ago, basically out of desperation, I bought those three mangoes. And actually, no, I bought five mangoes and today I ate two of them. Yeah, they clearly ripened, but they were neither sweet nor aromatic. And from a European mango, by the way, this is the variety Austin, one of my favorite varieties. From a European mango, I expect something else. Well, are those mangoes here ripe and sweet and aromatic? Nope. They already have a little bit of flavor. Then why did I buy so many? By the way, they cost around, yeah, 2 euro. Those were like 160 something, but sometimes you get them for 220 something. So, yeah, <clears throat> considerably more expensive than other mangoes uh, in the mainstream supermarkets, but considerably cheaper than the ones who come here that come here by plane. And now, yeah, what's the difference between those mangoes I bought out of desperation? And those mangoes, which are neither ripe nor sweet nor aromatic, but I still bought a lot of them. Well, when I saw those in the supermarket, basically the whole bunch was, the color was a mixture of green and red, almost no yellow. I took this one because it had some hints of yellow. I took this one because there wasn't much red, but it 
the green was a little bit more pale and I don't really know why I took this one. <laughs> this is the typical mango I would not buy in the supermarket. Okay, I can say I, I bought it for the video. There is a lot of red, but don't be fooled by that. A lot of mango varieties, if there is just red and green and no yellow, they are not very good. So those mangoes were picked very underripe. They were just a couple in the bunch which were picked slightly less underripe, but still too underripe. Those here, they were also picked underripe, but what's the difference? Well, first they are bigger, but price-wise they were pretty much the same. <clears throat> and then, if you look at them, there is a mixture of yellow, green and... Red. The yellow is the important color. And they also already have a little bit of little bit of a mango flavor. By the way, they are a lot uh, more the red and yellow are a lot more bright than my phone is showing here. And the colors will become really bright. This mango, for example, is pretty bright, and in a couple of days it will be really bright. So why did I buy so many mangoes? Can I eat those mangoes now? Yeah, I can eat them and I guess most of the Germans would be happy with the taste. But I will keep them for about one more week. I selected those uh, 21 mangoes out of maybe over a hundred. Well, I'm not sure why I selected this one. It's not particularly good. Look at this. Lots of nice orange colors, not just red and green, but orange orange means there is yellow and red mixed together so i bought a lot of those mangoes and now i'll wait for a couple days since they are here all together they produce a lot of pheromones which accelerates the ripening of the fruit and also accelerate the ripening of the less ripe fruit so that at the end they will all be ripe at once. So yeah, buying so many mangoes which are not fit to consume yet. I will have to start eating a couple starting tomorrow. A couple of still not completely ripe mangoes. Then I'll binge eat them while they are perfectly ripe. And then, yeah, there is a problem with Austin mangoes when they are overripe their flavor becomes very overwhelming. They are very aromatic mango, not now, but in a couple days they will have a very nice flavor. But a couple days later the flavor will be so overwhelming, it will... How shall I describe it? Yeah, there is a lot of mango flavor in there, but also a lot of those mango flavors which remind me of machine oil, which are typical for rare jungle mangoes in Borneo. So yeah, with Austin, basically, you should look what fruit you buy in the supermarket. Don't buy anything like this. As I said, I bought it out of desperation. Buy stuff like this. Of course, bigger fruit are always good. Size matters. You will have more to eat. Never be fooled by a lot of red color on the mango. There must be red and yellow or orange. Orange is red and yellow. Even if there is almost no real red here, the, there's a lot of orange and the, the green is kind of transitioning into orange. That means those mangoes are not ripening naturally on the tree, but they have been at least a little bit ripe on the tree so that they continue ripening and that they can reach a stage where, where they will be sweet and flavorful. The ones I ate today, yeah, they were nice and soft, but no sweetness, no flavor, and I'm sure this one will be the same. When I eat it in maybe a week, there will be no sweetness, no flavor, it will be soft and juicy, but that's all. Well, you can, of course, also try to press the mangoes, but those here, they are still pretty hard. I'm pressing them carefully. And so I, I cannot, I, I cannot, yeah, I cannot notice any softness. I could press them harder, and then there would be a difference with this, between this completely underripe mango and this half underripe mango. But when I press it harder, 
I will bruise it and it will be bruised and be sitting here for days and ripening and when it's ripe the area around the bruise will probably not be good to eat anymore. So yeah, you cannot use the press test with those mangoes. You can do it when you are looking for perfectly ripe mangoes. You can eat the same day, but with those, nope, they are still not good to eat. <coughs> if I press them to check if they are softer than this one, I will just spoil the mangoes. So yeah, this is basically what you uh, what you can do to choose the perfect Austin mangoes. Now is the season, late September and then throughout October. Don't, uh, yeah, don't buy bad quality mangoes. You can also apply those rules to most other mango species traded in Germany. If there is no yellow in the mango, most varieties, uh, did I say species, most mango varieties. There is no yellow in the mango, in most varieties it will not be ripe. By the way, if you are wondering why there is a domestic, even commercial mango production in Europe. Well, mangoes can kind of grow in subtropical areas like Florida, California, the Canary Islands, southern China. And yes, some areas in southern Europe, the Costa Tropical has been almost subtropical. And now with the climate change, areas like yeah, areas like Sicily, Malta, Crete, well, just the southern coast of Sicily and Crete, but most of Malta, they have quite a subtropical climate. Also, the European mangoes are often tastier than the tropical mangoes because often the tropical mango season coincides with the rainy season and the fruit are not very, very ripe nor very tasty. But in Europe, those mangoes are ripening over the Mediterranean summer, which means almost no rain, um, artificial irrigation, and yeah, heat and sun, up to 16 hours of sun every day, at least in June and July. And still a lot of sun in August and September, when is the crucial time for the ripening of those mangoes. So that's why the European mangoes are generally among the tastiest mangoes in the world. I guess that might also be the reason the Florida mangoes are so tasty because it's a subtropical area. And the second reason is those have, haven't been traveling for many weeks by ship. Those have been <laughs> shipped by a truck or train for maybe one, two, max three days. So folks, go to the next supermarket, get a couple good Austin mangoes, but leave a couple ones for me too. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful German supermarkets and don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.